So over on page 108, the title insurance is nothing more than an insurance policy, much like every other insurance policy in the world. So to let's speak to Cameron's question. I'm going to write this word other insurance to mean things like health insurance, life insurance, car insurance, most of the other insurance that you think about. All of those other insurances protect you from future incidents. I'm going to have a car wreck, I better have insurance. I'm going to get sick, I need health insurance. Where title work only protects historical stuff that has already happened. Sears claims to have put a roof on my house years ago. Mortgage company claims to have put a mortgage on my property weeks ago. So title insurance only protects historical activities. And because of that, Cameron, history is something you cannot change despite a lot of liberals trying to here lately, liber history is something that is already set in place. So therefore, we only pay our policy, that insurance, one time because we can check the history as opposed to future insurance, we pay on some kind of reoccurring basis. I paid my car insurance this month. I didn't need it, so I will pay on it next month, and then next month, and then next month. All right. Title insurance only can pay up to the face value of the policy. You get a title insurance policy based upon the sales price of the house. That is the highest payout that can ever be made. You have a $100,000 house that you're buying. Your title insurance will be for $100,000. The cost for that is called a premium, just like all of the other insurances in that fact. They're both, you both pay a premium on both of them. So the premium is based on the face value of the policy. $100,000 title insurance policy is less than a $250,000 insurance policy. Here, in future stuff, the loss could be, and I'm gonna use the word infinite, which we know nothing's infinite, but you get my point. You hurt somebody in a car accident, you may pay them 200, 300, 400, a million dollars in damages and hospital bills and all of that, and your car's only worth 10 grand. So the payout is could be larger than the cost. So those are some big differences in the insurance. Other than that, they are still a, just an insurance policy that is protecting that boop title when you make those definitions of warranty forever and yada, 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 and you get the five, the point, okay? The coverage on these policies, there is a standard policy and there, there is an extended policy. And there's a chart on page 109 that you need to look at. There is one in there that is really weird to me. It's called a forged document. That is actually covered under a standard policy. If someone forges a document, it could still be covered. It just depends on when that forgery was discovered. Was it known in advance? How was it done? The title insurance comes from a company called ALTA, A-L-T-A, the American Land Title Association. 
Here's the funny thing about title insurance. There are so many different versions. I don't even know what they are. And I'm not saying I'm a genius. I'm just saying in the business 20 years, I don't know all of them. <clears throat> so literally, no joke, in our purchase agreement, there is a checkbox that says, give me the best policy I need. Check. We let them <clears throat> worry about it because it depends. There's an Alta 98, an Alta 92, there's a Centurion, there's a Gold. It depends on the property that you're buying as to which policy. A, a great example would be you're buying a house in the inner city where there's no driveways, they park on the road. You may not need the Alta 98 <clears throat> because it's going to have the egress and the ingress of how to go on and off the property. Well, we're not doing that, parking on the road. As opposed to buying 30 acres of farmland where you could drive off the road, down in the ditch and onto the farm in any place. So you may need some definition as to where that easement really is and where you can enter. That's just one example. So there are so many different things. We don't even worry about it. We don't even teach it. I just tell you, mark the box that says, give me the one I need and let them worry about it. <clears throat> so it does offer protection against this statement. So you've got the standard coverage, you've got an extended coverage, and you've got other things that can be covered. Now there are two types of policies as well, because there are multiple people involved. They want to cover both sides. So we have this thing called an owner's policy and we have one called a lender's policy. Now, both of these actually protect the buyer in definition. The owner's policy is the portion that says, I'm the owner, I will remove all the encumbrances, things like that. The lender's policy is the one that says, hey, we want all further assurance, we want the quiet enjoyment. So there's two halves to this policy. And the most common way that you see this split is the seller will pay for the owner's policy and the buyer will pay for the lender's policy. That is the checkbox in our purchase agreement. Seller to pay owner's policy, buyer to pay lender's policy. So there's two sides to this Alta title work. You know, this guy's might be 500, this guy's might be 150. That's a ballpark because it depends. Is it a million dollar home or a hundred thousand? All right. So there's two halves or types of the policy which covers each prospective person section. Now, I have seen a lot of times on deals that were cash, there's no lender's policy. You do not need a policy to protect the lender <clears throat> so that he can get repaid. Because what that policy's purpose is, is if that lender loans you 100 grand and there's something wrong, the insurance will give them back their 100,000 so that they're made whole and there's no issues. So if it's a cash policy or a cash deal, there are a lot of times when the lender's policy is actually not given or issued. Thumbs up. Are there any questions so far about the title insurance? One last thing I wanna talk about is this thing called a Torin certificate. <clears throat> a Torin certificate. Well, that's not right. There's a lot of times if you've ever gone to a bar and they say, okay, we need your ID and you show them a passport, that works because to get a passport, you had to have your driver's license. 
I love this art little thing. I just wish I was better at it. All right. So instead of us carrying our title insurance policy around, I want to move that because actually that represents would be over here. So instead of us carrying this title insurance policy all the time, we can actually get this thing called a Torrens certificate. So when someone says, can you prove you own the property? Yes, here's my Torrens certificate. Because to get the Torrens, you had to have the title insurance as proof before they would issue this. Just like to get your passport, you had to show your driver's license as proof. That way the drop passport is a valid identification, just like the Torrens certificate is a valid identification. It is nothing but a database registration of ownership of property. Indiana does not use the Torrens certificate. It would be nice. I've got a little wallet size certificate from Texas A&M. You know, you get the big wall one and then you get one you can put in your wallet and carry around so you can show people, hey, look, I got a graduate from A&M. Here's my certificate. To get that, I had to have the big one. I seem to have run out of material to teach you guys today. Are there any questions about the title work? Anything about title insurance? All righty then. This is the end of chapter seven. That means there is a test tomorrow. Test number one. Remember, <clears throat> please do not get less than a 75 and email me and go, oh, what's going on? You have to have an average of 75 on the three exams. <clears throat> So if you only get a 70, don't panic. That just means on this test two and three, you've got to make up a little bit of points. You do not fail the first exam. You will not be able to see the answers on the first exam because you need to have all three of them done. And when all three of them are done and you pass, it will unlock all of the answers and then you can use the three exams to study for the state licensing exam. If I showed you the answers now and something happened and I wanted to reset one to help you out, you would have seen the answers. So we can't do that. Plus there were some issues of people not being totally forthright and sharing answers with their partners. So you will take the test, you will submit it for grading, and once you submit it, it will give you a score. If you don't get a 75, don't cry, panic, moan. Just realize you've got to make up some points. It's not the end of the world. You technically will not fail test one. You technically do not fail test two. Test three is the one where you need an 80 and you only got a 79. That's a problem. But after test one, it just tells you what you need to do on the other two, all right? 100 questions, multiple choice. Please sit somewhere when you start, you will be able to finish in one section. Make sure there is a good internet connection. If you live in the boonies like I do, you might wanna go to a library or something of that nature, because if you get disconnected, it will also kick you out, all right? Any questions? You guys ready? Here it goes. Three, two, one, nothing. I'll see you guys later.